everyone and a very warm welcome to our Canva Live workshop today. We're thrilled to have you joining us. For those of you who don't know what Canva Live is, it is the home of workshops and webinars for you, our Canva community. To find out about upcoming events, just head to designschool.canva.com forward slash events, where you'll find a range of interactive content created to empower our community to design. Well, I would like to give a very warm welcome to our guest for today's workshop, Charlotte. So I'll let her introduce herself. Hi everyone and good morning. I'm Charlotte and I'm a design educator here at Canva. So I'm a former primary school teacher with nearly 10 years experience teaching all across Australia, both in Sydney and in Perth. And I love empowering teachers and students to develop a love of learning. And I get to do that as part of my role at Canva. So I'm really excited to be your presenter for our Back to School with Canva workshop today. So in today's session, I'll be giving you an overview of the Canva for Education product. And then we'll dive into why classroom branding is so important. I'll also teach you how to create your own classroom brand kit using Canva and then how to carry your brand into your online spaces. And lastly, I'll help you get inspired with some innovative ways to use Canva in both primary and secondary settings. So hopefully by the end of this, you'll have lots of new exciting tools and templates to explore when you're prepping for the new school year. Also today, we will be doing some practical activities. So I recommend now logging into your Canva account and having that set up next to your Zoom window. So let's have a look at what Canva for Education is and what it includes. So we're a company with a very ambitious mission to empower the whole world to design. We're doing okay so far with over 70 million monthly active users, doubling in size every year in every country and in over 100 languages. And we're investing in education as be a force for good in the world is our most important core value. So it's absolutely free now and forever. Our goal is to empower creativity and collaboration in the classroom. We want to improve learning outcomes and empower creativity for free. Our mission for Canva for Education is to empower creativity and collaboration in every learner. So we launched Canva for Education, available for all K-12 school districts, schools, teachers and students for free. It includes free access to millions of premium copyright free templates, photos, fonts, icons and videos. We've got group activities for student collaboration, talking presentations allowing you or your students to add your voiceover, background remover, a popular pro feature, copper and FERPA compliance, a peace of mind, especially when using with children, and integrations into all popular learning management systems like Google Classroom, Canvas, Schoolology, Moodle, and more. And the ability to switch on single sign-in for your school or district. And to top it all off, Canva is 100% free for K-12 districts, schools, teachers, and students. So now we'll hand it over to Charlotte for the rest of today's session. So first up, I've got a quick question for you. So if everyone could share in the chat where you're from, what grade you teach, or what you're currently doing in education right now, just so everyone can see what, where everyone's come from. So my last role was in uh, Sydney and I was teaching year two. So we've got people from all over the world today. And the workshop was made with a range of student ages in mind. So as you're listening, I hope you can think of some ways to apply these ideas into your own classroom. So let's get started on the first part of the workshop today, which is classroom branding. But let's first have a look at why branding is so important. So our meeting of environment has really changed dramatically over the past year. And a few years ago, when we mentioned the classroom, everyone visualised a school setting with four walls, desks, teachers and students. And your students may have attended this physical space every day. You could see them working, you could see them raising their hands, asking questions and completing their work. You could see them collaborating with other people. And you could also see those students who weren't as engaged. 
Everything was happening right there in front of you. Well, as we all know, that changed pretty quickly in 2020. All of that was squished and adapted into an online learning space. Students stayed in their home. It was difficult to know when they were getting stuck, to know if they were engaged. I personally found it hard at times to even know if they were <laughs> engaged in any of my lessons. You may have been communicating through an online learning environment such as phones, iPads, or in many regions, you could have relied on printed materials that you dropped off or posted to families. Well, today for many of us, it's a bit of both. You may now be working with physical materials such as posters, printed handouts, whiteboards and worksheets, or also working with digital materials like learning management systems, online quizzes and videos. The list is really endless. Now let's have a talk about the environment and how this can play a powerful role in influencing our emotions and how you can use it to create a classroom community where everyone feels calm and confident. So on the screen here, you can see an MRI machine. It doesn't look particularly friendly, does it? In fact, for many, this is a really terrifying experience. Up to 13% of people having an MRI had a panic attack. This is something that a group of designers thought about. They asked, how could we make it look friendlier for children? And this is what they came up with. It's a very different experience now, isn't it? Now the MRI is part of this fun ocean faring adventure, which really reduced negative emotions and experiences. And there are lots of redesigned MRI machines now. Some are space themed, some are decorated like castles. There's even angry bird ones. So in the chat, how does this idea apply to the classroom? Does anything pop into your head straight away? Have you seen students feel nervous or overwhelmed in a classroom? And what are some of the things you can do to change that emotional experience? So as you have that in your mind, we're going to dive a bit further and explore colour. Have you ever looked around your classroom and noticed the colours you've used? So colour is in, in all of the elements in the environment. It's on the classroom walls, on our printed materials, in digital materials. It's even in your learning management system. It's everywhere we look and it's everywhere students look. So rather than picking 30 colours, every single colour you love, in all different shades and brightness, we can reduce stimulation by picking just a few. Now, this doesn't mean colours have to be boring. We don't want to suck all the fun out of it. They can still be bright. It just means using a little less. And Canva has a really great feature too, which can help you find cohesive colour palettes. So ones that you can instantly apply to your designs and work really well. The next piece of the puzzle is complexity. So complexity is a measure of how the different materials and elements in the room combine to create a visually coherent and structured or a completely random and chaotic environment. So you need to ask yourself, how cohesive does everything feel? Have a think about your classroom or even past classrooms or classrooms you've been in yourself as a student. Is the environment scattered with different fonts, colours, styles and characters, each one kind of working against each other? Like this collection, you can see that we've got a photorealistic leaf, a watercolour apple, then an icon of a presenter, a 3D monster sort of thing, and just a bunch of completely different styles of clip art. Or does everything match and complement each other, like you can see in this example? Now, why does this even matter? Well, low diversity helps students focus, it reduces cognitive load, and it really creates a sense of cohesion across your lessons and across your classroom. There's less unique components and elements that we have to individually process. So this allows learning to be the main focus. Now, how can you achieve this quickly and easily? Well, one way is to use Canvas themed kits. So we've created a number of different themes which are suitable to all different age groups. You'll be able to explore and have a little look for something that you like. So on the page here, you can see me locating them on the home page underneath templates. And feel free to have a little look now and locate them underneath this tab and see if there's any that you like. Now, on to part two, brand kits. Now, you can take your classroom design one step further and create your own Canva brand kit. So by creating a brand kit, it becomes easy to create consistent designs. You can think of it as your own little toolbox where you can select your favourite go-to fonts, colours, logos and images. 
so they are easy reach whenever you want to use them during your resource creation. Now you're probably thinking, I'm not a brand. Why would I want to use this? Well, think about what I just mentioned regarding colour and design. You can use those principles in any resource, printable, presentation or activity you create in Canva. Therefore, making your life easier and also creating a friendly classroom environment that becomes familiar to your students. On the screen, you can see an example of what a brand kit looks like. You can see that there is a section at the top for logos. Underneath, I've created some colour palettes. And on the right, I've got some fonts that I want to consistently use in my designs. Let's explore now how we can create one. So to find your brand kit, you begin on your home page. You will see it on the menu on the right, underneath the heading tools. Once you click here, you will see this screen. You can name your brand kit and then edit the fonts, colours and logos. So think about picking your font suitable for headings. So that's the top font here that I have chosen. And then think of a font, a main body text. So this is a font you want your students to be able to easily read. A great font that I like for younger students is the Canva student font. You can also upload fonts that you may be required to use by your school or even upload your favourite go-to font. On the left, you can create different colour palettes. The idea that pops into my head straight away is using different colour schemes for different subjects. So to allow my students to visually differentiate. So I made a maths resources colour palette and an English resources. And in the logo section, you may have a teacher logo you like to use, a Bitmoji, a school logo, or even a class mascot. So any image you would like to use over and over again, you can upload in this section. Let's have a little quick look at how we can use our brand kit when working on a design. So on the screen, you can see that I'm applying my brand kit to this poster template. So once I've uploaded my brand kit, once I'm in a design, I can see that it's all here ready for me. I don't have to find the colors, everything is saved, and it's always there for easy access. So the next part of the session is carrying your brand into your online space. So after the events of the last couple of years, it has never been more important to ensure our virtual online space also embodies a warm and safe environment for our students. So we're going to look at how we can use Canva to help inspire and motivate our students when learning online. I would like to introduce you to Paige, who is a high school teacher at Kambala. So we spoke to her about how she is using Canva in her online classroom. My name is Paige and I'm a teacher in Sydney, Australia. In our school, every student is provided with a laptop, which is uh, incredible. And we have an online learning hub called Sundial, which I've shown some pictures of here. So on Sundial, uh, it's public facing. We communicate with our students and the broader school community. Uh, we also post our lesson outlines and our resources. And it's really the one-stop shop that our students go to. Uh, what we've learned about Sundial over the years is that it is incredibly important uh, that our communication on Sundial is consistent, engaging and clear. And it's, it's quite interesting. We can, um, we can do quite a bit of analytics with our online system and look at all, what students have looked at particular pages and for how long and how often they've visited and that sort of thing. And what we have noticed is that the pages that are uh, more creatively designed, uh, clear and consistent in their communication, students are frequenting those pages uh, more often and, and downloading the resources and using the resources from there, as opposed to the pages that have lots of resources but are really difficult to navigate. Uh, and so what we have learned as well is that each year we can improve our design practice and the setup of our online classroom and that at the beginning of the year, taking time to really sit down and spend a day or, or a, a couple of hours in different blocks to set up the classroom is key. And the benefit of doing this is that it establishes a sense of safety in routine for the students as they begin the school year and also excitement for the learning journey ahead. And so what I have here is I have my uh, three of my class pages. So on the left, I have two of my history classes, my U9 and my U10. And on the right, I have one of my senior class pages uh, where I teach global politics. Um, now with these classes, I have 
I have goals on, on what I'm hoping to achieve. And so the main um, point of the class page is to be that classroom as the student walks in and opens their laptop. Uh, it's consistent and the learning resources from, from prior uh, lessons are there and uh, there is a clear direction moving forward of, um, for the student. It's also really important that it's an engaging classroom space uh, and also that it's a celebration of student work. And so a lot of the work that students will create in Canva, I will actually download and then post onto our learning management system. Uh, it's, it's nice because it's well designed, so it fits in with the classroom as well. Um, but it's also a great way to, to, to celebrate student work. I love that idea. What a great way to acknowledge students' work. And it's definitely something that's easy to impl implement in your own online classroom. So as Paige mentioned, it is really important that you take the time to set up your online space well at the start of the year. You want your pages to be consistent, engaging and clear. So you can set your students up for success. I'm now going to let her explain the impact this has had on her students. Uh, but this year, our design has resulted in uh, clear feedback from our students that there is higher engagement. Um, they're going to the Sundial page more to find the answers to their questions as opposed to coming to the teacher. So it's enabling them to be independent learners, giving them that confidence. Uh, and it also has resulted in uh, just more excitement about the class and in, in, in having somewhere uh, fun to be digitally. Um, somewhere where they're keen to go to and find what they need to know. Uh, so one of the design elements that we introduced this year was adding um, kind of on each landing page for each subtopic, we would have the exact same tiles underneath. And so my main point there is that we developed this understanding that consistency of design was extremely impo important. Um, from our youngest students in year seven all the way through to our eldest in year 12. Uh, you can see that I've, I've split the page here into two possible um, paths forward for the students. And so on the left-hand side, we have nail the basics. On the right, we have add complexity. And these take the students off to different pages where they can find different resources and that sort of thing. Uh, but I created these tiles in Canva uh, and you can see they're extremely basic, uh, but they, they flow with that initial design and uh, give the students a clear roadmap of where they should be going next in their online classroom. So the key takeaway from Paige's findings was that student feedback and statistics reported higher engagement with the class page when it was designed well. So this ultimately allows more time to be spent on learning and thinking and less time on the communication of information. This lowers again the cognitive load of having to orient yourself all the time. So let's see how you can create these things in Canva. I put together a short little video showing you how to create a banner, and then I'm going to give you a chance to make your own afterwards for the next activity. So you can either watch and follow along, or you can watch and then have a go afterwards. We're going to first search for a Google Classroom header. And we are going to choose a design that we would like to edit. I'm going to choose this one here and customize this template. Once we're inside our design, we're going to go over here and we're going to have a look at styles. And you can see here that my brand kit has automatically been opened, but I can click on the down arrow if I have more than one. And I'm going to select Miss Green Year 4. And I can see that my fonts are saved and also my colors. So this is a classroom decor um, resource. So I'm going to click on that palette and I'm going to shuffle, see if I get what I like. I like this pink one. I'll have a look to see if I want to apply my fonts. Perfect. And I have now applied my brand kit. Easy as that. So now we're moving on to part four which is back to school with Canva. So in this next part of the webinar, we're going to explore some fun and practical ways you can use Canva to help prepare you for back to school. So I'm going to show you some template types I would use and some tips and tricks and hopefully help get your creative juices flowing ready for the first week back to school. So let's jump in. 
Within the Camp of Education software, you have access to an abundance of resources that you can share and download. There's worksheets, posters, planners, presentations, flashcards, game boards, infographics, interactive activities. There's so many. And every single one of them is editable, so you can customise it for your classroom. I have picked only a few for today, um, and I hope that you will love them as much as I do. We are going to focus on five back-to-school activities, and I hope that you can use these in the next couple of weeks or at least become inspired by them to make those first few weeks a little bit easier. The first template I have picked is a Meet the Teacher poster. So this turns introductions into a fun activity with all different meet the teacher or student templates. You can fill them out, personalise them, and you can share them out loud in your class or share virtually. You can even send them out to families before the school year even starts. Canva has a big range of different templates that you can use to create a vibrant meet the teacher poster. I used to find that the first day back at school always made me nervous, no matter how long I was teaching for. And it's the first proper interaction with your students. So by creating a poster like this, it enabled me to break the ice and begin to open the communication lines between me and my students. They also love to get a little glance into your life and actually see you as a real human. So on the left, you can see that I customised this Meet Your Teacher poster by adding in my own photo, my own facts, and I had a little play around with the colours and the elements. You can even insert your Bitmoji. Idea two is an About Me presentation. So these templates are really amazing for you to complete as a teacher, but also fantastic tasks to complete with your students on the first week back. There is a large array of templates again that will appeal to your students. So they can go in and explore, pick their template, and with Canvas drag and drop features, they can easily customise their design in just a few clicks. Students will have a blast then being able to share these with their class in person or again virtually. And these presentations would provide you with a powerful insight into the child and really get you to help to know them better that first couple of weeks. Because as we all know, building relationships really is key. Idea three are some back to school icebreakers. So if you search up icebreakers within Canva, you will find lots of different templates. And I love to complete these over the first few weeks, so throw them in every couple of days, as they're a great, great way to incorporate fun whilst also building relationships and trust. Canva has some different templates that you might see pop on the screen, and ones like Roll and Tell, which are templates that promote conversation and discussion with your students. You can also pick one and then present it in full screen and use it as a whole class teaching moment. Or you can assign it to students and they can complete it in small groups. As you can see, all of these templates can be adjusted to suit both the virtual and physical classrooms. There's also things like bingo boards, scavenger hunts, self-portraits and open-ended questions. And when you explore, you will find even more. The next idea is to develop some class expectations. So I usually do these in two steps. And I really enjoy doing them with my class because it encourages student voice and it increases accountability. I found that if I got students involved in the decision making, they were more on board with reaching the expectations or the rules that we developed throughout the year. So developing class expectations with your students empowers them and builds community and culture in your classroom. With Canvas Brainstorm Templates, which is the one you can see on the right, you can promote student voice. So to find these, you simply search for Brainstorm Templates and you can go in and edit the text so that you get the title that you want and the question prompts that you want. And then you can share the link with your students and they can start to collaborate on the design as you can see on the screen. Students will love being able to add their own ideas using the sticky notes and vote on their favourite ideas. And it provides a perfect scaffold for class discussion. However, once I complete this kind of brainstorm, I want to consolidate it. So a really great way to do that is using a Canvas template that they have lots of, like the one on the left, as it creates an engaging visual. And it also creates a point we can go back to and refer to 
the things that you decided as a class at the beginning of the year. So if you search for classroom rules posters in the Canva template library, you will find a huge range of different posters already for you that all you have to do is edit the text. There's also, if you have a search a bit deeper with the words class agreement, you will find different templates where students can come in and kind of sign at their name or image and it becomes kind of like a classroom contract. Idea five is creating a virtual classroom. So these are perfect for both the physical and the virtual class. I use a screen like this every morning in my classroom and displayed it on my whiteboard or a screen because it's the perfect way to set students up for success at the beginning of the day, no matter their age. Students love to know, as you all would know, what the plan is for the day, what's happening next, the date, and any other special comments you might want to add. Maybe it's adding in a photo for students' birthdays, adding a daily question that you want them to answer for the roll call, adding a daily quote, or even embedding using Canva, a YouTube video, which might have some calming music playing in the background. You can completely customise these to suit your class and your teaching style. There is also integrations under the More tab where you can insert Bitmojis. So if you don't want to have a photo of yourself, you can add a cartoon version of yourself like the one at the top, and it becomes like your virtual teacher. You can also record yourself within Canva. So down the bottom, I had taken a video of saying good morning to my students and telling them what was happening for the day. And it saved directly into my video without me having to leave Canva at all. So this is perfect for when you want to share it on your LMS or Google Classroom or any other education platforms like Seesaw or Flipgrid. Now, I couldn't just stick to back to school templates. I have to share with you some other fantastic template types that you might not know exist in Canva. So these are not only just great for back to school activities, but would be amazing for learning and designing all year round. These templates will help you build engagement and interaction in your classroom. So let's have an explore. And I'm just gonna let you know now that we have got a list of every single template that I'm going to show you today because I know when I listen to these type of webinars, I'm frantically trying to find them. However, we've got a list, so you don't even have to worry about that. So first up, we have our collaboration templates. So these can really help collaboration happen in person, virtually, or a combination of both. In the template library, when you search for group work, you will find an assortment of different templates. And you can even narrow your search even more by adding education filters on the sidebar. You'll find brainstorming, group voting, group infographics, and even a group artwork like the one you can see on the screen. These are really fantastic templates, which you can customise to suit your activity and share with your students. Again, using a link or directly pushing it out to your LMS. So a group of students can hop into the same doc and work together to complete the task. And don't forget at any time, you can add in the chat. And also, if you have any ideas of how you could use this with your students, add it so everyone can see. So I really like this idea of a group artwork and I had never thought of that before seeing this template. I was like, oh, students will love that. Another type of template you can explore are exit tickets. So that you can easily assign these to students as an activity to complete in Canva. So they can actually answer the questions in Canva and add their own text, images, and more to answer the questions. Or you could find the ones you love, download them, and print to share with your students. Exit tickets really provide a great insight into the level of student understanding, and they allow you to complete a quick formative assessment to see if you need to adjust your teaching in the following lessons. So to find exit tickets, you go in the Canva library, and you type in exit tickets and lots of different examples will appear. Another template type that we have explored and are constantly adding more of are online whiteboards. So these online whiteboards are very similar to the collaboration tools and they do promote collaboration between students. They also are focusing on encouraging thinking routines and include resources like KWL charts, design thinking, scientific method, and project planning. So as the 
video played in the screen, you could see different templates that, again, promote collaboration. So to find these ones, you search the words online whiteboards. Canva also has a large bank of graphic organisers. So I love using graphic organisers with my students. I think I use them <laughs> at least three lessons a day, as I can adapt them to many different subject areas, to different activities, and to different student ages. Within Canva, there's also a range of organisers that are more suited to different subject areas. So there's a whole bank of English graphic organisers that will help with your teaching of writing, and then there's ones that are more relevant to science. There'll be definitely something that you will find useful. You find these templates by searching for graphic organisers in the template library. And they start out super simple and you can customise them like the one I'm doing on the screen and share them by printing or sharing the link. I'm also going to introduce you to one of Canva's new features. It is called the Draw Tool. It's situated under the More tab and this tool allows you and your students to select a pen marker or highlighter, which you can use to colour, draw or mark directly onto a Canva design. You can also have a play around with the different colours and the different transparencies. I think this is a game changer as it turns every Canva design into an interactive teaching tool. This tool would be perfect for models and shared lessons. I imagine putting this sheet up on the big board and getting students to come up and actually interact with it. It's good to mention that you can also keep these drawings or you can easily delete them if you don't want to have it on your design. So it just opens up Canva to actually being a teaching tool, not just a graphic design, which is really exciting. I wonder if anyone is going, oh, I'd love to use this draw tool straight away when school goes back. So I had a little search in the template library and I found some templates that I think would be ideal to use with students and the draw tool. So I found a feeling faces template so I can imagine the students going in and either searching for pictures to answer the different emotions or they could use the draw tool and draw on it. I found a peek inside my mind where they can draw what they're thinking and then also a kindness is contagious template as well. So straight away I can see how draw tools could apply to lots of different teaching and learning experiences. So imagine that combined with text, photos and graphics, it really makes Canva a powerful one-stop shop for you and your students. Next up is an infographic. So infographic creation really helps students develop data visualisation skills and they're a really great way to encourage students to communicate their data visually in any subject area. So to find infographics, again, go to the Canva template library and you can type in infographics and you will find different types. So there's a compare and contrast, a data infographic, a timeline infographic or process infographics. So this data visualisation is a really important skill for students to learn and it's more than just adding a chart to a slide. It's using data to tell a story or clearly communicate an idea so it's easy to understand. And I would also like to introduce you to the chart tool. So it's underneath this own tab, charts, and it allows students to easily add data and represent data in their designs. So once you open the chart tool by going to the editor side panel, you can select all different types of charts. You've got your bar chart, your line chart, your scatter plots, and even a pictogram. So once the chart is added, you can add the chart data into your table. You can change the colours, you can change the symbols. You can really manipulate it to suit your learning needs. And it's an easy tool for students to use and it's really eye-catching. And the great thing about the Canva chart tool is that students can add the data visualisations into any designs they create, such as presentations and posters. All right, we're going to have a go at trying to complete a task together. So on the screen, there is a QR code and we're going to have a go at using an online whiteboard and complete a class brainstorm together for the prompt, a positive classroom looks and sounds like. So if you could now either scan the QR code that you see on the screen 
or click on the link that Leah has just shared with you. And I'm going to see, oh, great, there's already people in here. So what you can do is if you're into the brainstorm, there's a couple of pages just in case you don't have any room left. And have a go at answering the prompt, a positive classroom looks and sounds like just to give you a chance to actually go into a Canva design and experience what your students would. So find a sticky note, claim it, and add your idea, and we'll see what people can come up with. I thought I'd just start everyone off, and so I wrote one which was an open space for people to share their own feelings. I feel like that's very important for a positive classroom space. Great response, Lee. I can see that someone else has said it's freely sharing their thoughts and collaborating. And, and now you can see that collaboration doesn't just doesn't have to just happen in person. We can also use these tools that we've seen today to promote it in the online space as well. So that sense of connection isn't lost. And as a teacher, it's really good to see that who's typing where. So I can see which students are working on the brainstorm at any time. And I can also see the revision history as well. So if you need to go back and see which student wrote what or who actually really participated, you have the ability to do that in Canva as well. And you can also imagine how excited students would be to be able to go into a design like this and it be colourful and engaging and they can really interact with it. I love that someone's had a go at inserting some elements too. So that's really good. So the best thing that I've learned about learning how to use Canva is diving in and having a play. So with the things that you have seen today, have a go try after this and see if you can have a play and learn some new things. So straight away, some of you are already taking that risk and having a go to step outside your comfort zone. So thanks, everyone. So it's time to wrap it up. And I have loved spending the last just less of an hour with all of you learning about some great Canva tools for back to school. And I would love to know what is one thing that you are taking away from this webinar? I saw Bethany wrote in the chat that she really liked the exit ticket template. It's such a good way to quickly check in and see what, what your students learned during that lesson and then who to check back in with the next lesson. So yeah, have a have a go with those. Oh, great. People are posting. So someone's um, finding the drawing tool. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good feature. I think I only just am on the tip of what the ideas are you could use with it. So that would be really good. And you can also, with all of these, once you have your Education Pro account, you can assign these tasks to students. So this is just a small element of what Canva Education is. So when Leah shares all these next resources, really go have a watch and see what else you can do with in the platform. So I'm going to hand it over to Leah to wrap today up. Now, before we go, I've got a few resources I would love to share with you all. First up, I would love to introduce to you Canva Creators and specifically Education Creators. This is a new program within Canva that enables teachers to create, publish, and earn from their educational templates in Canva. We are currently in beta and starting to onboard teachers who are being paid royalties for their amazing teacher resource templates. So if you are a certified teacher and a Canva user, or you know a teacher who just loves creating educational resources, this is an environment that you could really thrive in. So you can follow the QR code on the screen to explore the Education Creator landing page and register your interest to be a part of our Education Creators program today. We have also just launched a new onboarding guide for teachers to give you all the tips and tricks to use Canva in your very own classroom. And please join our Facebook group for teachers. Here we post any new features or templates we have published and you can reach us directly with questions or chat to other teachers who are also using Canva in their classrooms. We also have a, another great Facebook group and it's Canva Design Circle. Here you will be inspired by others and motivated to explore everything Canva has to offer. And here is a link to Canva's amazing design school where there is a wide range of videos and content which can be used to teach yourself, but also can be shared as learning material for your students. 
There are many topics from how to create comic strips for your students to how to pick a color palette. So it's definitely great and I would recommend checking it out if you haven't already. And we also have video tutorials available on how to use Canva for education available at this link. So you can scan the QR code on the screen with your phone or head to the link in the chat. We look at creating a class and inviting students to project-based learning, giving feedback and much more. So there's lots of great Canva tips in there. And our final resource from today is the document that Charlotte put together showing all the templates that she has shown today in her presentation. So that would hopefully save you guys a lot of time. <laughs> so yeah. thank you, Charlotte, for putting this together. So yeah, it includes a list of every single thing I showed you today and the link. So you just click on the link and it will take you to your own template version of that design. And I'll also include it in the recording for anyone that missed it. So now we have a few extra minutes for Q&A. So if you have any questions about what we've covered today or any other education related questions, now is your chance, pop them in the Q&A panel and we will do our best to answer them. And I would also like to give our guest for today, Charlotte, a huge thank you it was such a great workshop and I hope the audience took so many great ideas away. Thanks, Leah. It was fun. Love talking back to school. So yeah. I, hope, I just hope it makes everyone's life a little bit easier in the coming weeks when you're planning for your back to school activities. Absolutely. And I can see lots of great love in the chat. So thank you very much. I just saw a couple of questions, Leah, in the chat. So Question regarding student videos in design school. There is lots of different videos and it's also constantly being updated. They're also on the Canva YouTube channel as well. We are writing these videos all the time. So as new templates come out, we are writing new videos of how you can use them. So if you do go on design school, there's lots of different categories. So, and it's constantly growing. So it would definitely be one to bookmark. And with Canva Certified, if you have a look at the link or even just Google Canva Certified, it gives you the steps of how you can do it. You do have to complete certain things to get approved. Not just everyone can be Canva Certified, but if you have a look at the link Leah shared above, it will show you how. Cool. Well, I think that wraps up our workshop for today. Thank you all for joining. I hope you learned something. And we look forward to seeing you at another Canva Live webinar. Thank you, everyone. Bye.